after this first session of the workshop. If it is all right, uh, we can be fairly informal. I'll start off by uh, from the side here because I don't think I need to sit in the middle and not hand you up the screen. And you'll find that later on I'll creep down and sit with all of you down there because I too would be very interested in the uh, talks of the speakers and to see their presentations. Uh, I've had a chance to meet uh, most of the speakers earlier and I think they have agreed with me that it would be easier for them to stay down at the floor uh, so that they can see the slides, the, the PowerPoint presentations that I put up uh, and they could use the uh, mic and also view the, um, the computer screen if they wish or else uh, view the screen as it's projected. Okay, I think the ground rules regarding the talks are already uh, mentioned earlier. We would like each speaker to, to speak for about 20 minutes. And if there are very urgent questions, I may allow just a one or two minutes of urgent questions with regards to that particular presentation. We will try to keep uh, additional time towards the end of the whole session so that the speakers can come up here as a panel and answer the questions uh, related to this, this particular afternoon session as, as a whole. It is my pleasure to uh, introduce the first speaker, that is um, Dr. Marcello Elizari. Uh, Dr. Elizari is the Chief of Cardiology Division of the Remos Mikia Hospital and the Emeritus Professor of Cardiology of the School of Medicine at the University of Salvador. Yes, he was, he's the former president of the Health Research Council of the Ministry of Health of the Government of the City of Buenos Aires, a person with great experience in the field of cardiology, and it's a pleasure to call on him to, uh, to present uh, the first talk today, um, representing the situation in Argentina. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here uh, to share with you this regional workshop on contactal diseases organized by the Academia Nacional de Brasileira de Medicina and the Academia Brasileira de Ciencias. Uh, my topic is going to be the state of the art of prevention and control of cardiovascular diseases in Argentina. And since it's the first talk, Subject, I will give a panoramic view about the importance of cardiovascular disease as a cause or the main cause of death in Western countries. But as you know, cardiovascular disease as a component of non complicated diseases is and will persist being the leading cause of mortality in the Western world. Detection, prevention, and management of cardiovascular disease has it developed in the last century has significantly reduced its impact in younger age, but have displayed its manifestation in the elderly and the population. Mm -hmm. 
Excuse me, but this is not the system. I mean, despite of paramount advances in prevention and management, cardiovascular disease mortality is still the major cause of premature death worldwide. Furthermore, the many developing countries are undergoing social transformation, and as advances are oriented to avoid childhood death due to infection and nutrition of the diseases, increasing number of individuals in these countries are reaching adults. It is projected that in the next 20 years, the majority of cardiovascular disease deaths will occur in what is now the developing world. Increasing longevity and developing in developing countries will produce in the years to come a significant rise in the prevalence of cardiovascular diseases and this capacity and this capacity and less preventive measures are taken to control this demographic trend. Besides, with the aging of the population, a higher proportion of events will occur in the elderly and also in women. In these two groups, the risk factor for coronary heart disease and stroke may be somewhat different from the data obtained in younger individuals. In fact, abnormalities of glucose metabolism are perhaps greater in women, older individuals, and certain ethnic groups such as some nations. This information suggests a changing pattern in epidemiology of the disease, the relative importance of other risk factors and preventing the strategies. To this change pattern that will modify risk factors, there is still a lot to be done in the area to identify newer risk factors in the elderly, women, and different ethnic backgrounds. Hypertension, vascular disease of the coronary artery, cerebral, and peripheral circulation are the most significant non communicable diseases in the Western world. Although some populations demonstrate a genetic predisposition to develop hypertension and accelerated atherosclerosis, the vast majority is acquired through lifestyle behaviors and their clinical manifestations appear in later life. Comparing observational data from several landmark studies suggest that tobacco use, elevation of cholesterol, hypertension, and diabetes are important caution uh, risk factors for clinical vascular disease. Despite each risk factor dependent on the increases in the development of atherosclerosis, the progression is increased when two or more risk factors are present. Well, this is very well known by all of you, and these risk factors are divided in three groups. There are factors which we cannot modify, such genetics, sex, race, or age. There are modifying factors like smoking, hypertension, high cholesterol, and diabetes. And there are contributing factors, uh, as obesity, sedentary lifestyle, stress, Well, uh, let's uh, see very quickly, I mean, some of the known biological determinants that are very well known by all of you. And the first place, cigarette, uh, tobacco. Cigarette smoking is a powerful and independent caution factor for the development of two of the most important chronic diseases worldwide, aterosclerosis and cancer. Cholesterol, large, Protective observational studies have demonstrated a strong direct relationship between serum cholesterol and atherosclerosis. Results from comparisons between different populations indicate that the lower the mean cholesterol concentration, the lower the risk of atherosclerosis, as it was demonstrated by uh, and studies. Hypertension. Increasing levels of diastolic and systolic blood pressure predict atherosclerosis. Ramingham data demonstrated correlation between hypertension and coronary artery disease and a progressive increase in cardiovascular risk with every increment of systolic pressure. However, this is a very interesting study made by Van der Hoogel in, in the year 2000, who uh, published in, in, in Germany. New England Journal of Medicine, which shows that 
in, in a study of seven countries, it showed that mortality is significantly different in Northern Europe, in Japan, or in the United States of America in the presence of the same blood pressure measurements. This indicates that isolated blood pressure measurements can account for this fact, uh, but they force you to think about other phenomena such as cultural aspects, local custom, stress, and lifestyle habitus of the society as the underlying causes. Well, this is another very well-known risk factor, diabetics, it's very important. Uh, diabetics are at much higher risk of coronary cardiovascular disease and death for any given level of the other major cardiovascular risk factors than non-diabetics. The absolute risk of cardiovascular death is three times higher for diabetics than non-diabetics across all ages, even after adjustment of serum cholesterol, hypertension, and cigarette smoking. Socioeconomic status and disease. This is one of the contributing factors. Individuals' lifetime choices are closely associated with their socioeconomic status. It is a universal finding across all nations that all cause mortality and morbidity follow a gradient across socioeconomic classes. Lower income and lower social status are associated with poorer overall health and heart disease.